Want to learn how to make your own gold shimmery watercolour paint and then how to use it in your art? Well, my name is Stacey and I am a design team member from the Pigeon Letters and I am here to show you in some very simple steps with very little ingredients how you can make your own fabulous paint at home with very little ingredients and then we can paint together and I will show you how to use that fabulous shimmery gold paint. Here are some tools that you will need to make watercolour paint. You will need some watercolour paper. You will need a palette knife, a blunt knife, or you could use a paintbrush as well. Uh, of course you need your beautiful shimmery mica colour pigment. You could work with a metallic base one as well. And of course, for testing our watercolour paint, we would need a paintbrush, uh, any size is fine. And we have a pen that is waterproof that we can use uh, later on. You will also need some binder, and that would have to be a gum arabic based binder. And you can buy that ready-made in any art store. You will need to put your beautiful shimmery paint into a container of sorts. You can use a typical pan, but I've got some beautiful uh, shells here that I collected that I would like to put my paint into today. So I'm just going to select a couple here that look quite fun. So I will pop those to the side for later for our paint. So just checking that you have your containers, your brushes, pen, paper, pigment, palette knife, binder, and of course water. Now we're going to take a scoop of pigment. Just one scoop. Peeped and place it on a flat surface could be a plate if you like now we're going to take a scoop of gum arabic or binder solution and put that on the slab and we will get our palette knife and start to mix the two together slowly uh, rushing will flick the particles in the air so make sure you do it at a nice pace and the idea is that we want all the binder to mix in with the pigment to a smooth consistency like so we want it to be a consistency that's going to be not too thick but not too runny so just make sure that all of that pigment is completely mixed in and you can use your palette knife to do so so let's have a look at that consistency we want it to be not too runny not too gluggy too thick we want it to come off our palette knife nicely as so okay so this is what we want to be looking for in terms of our consistency now the exciting part the reveal get your watercolor paper ready with a paintbrush that you like to use often i like to use my size six and we're going to wet the pig the uh, paint and uh, mix it around a little bit so that we can get a nice consistency for testing the paint as it would be in a pan when it's pre-wetted and we're going to apply that to our paper as you see so I really loaded up my paintbrush for this swatch and that way I could start from a very tinted to low tinted hue at the end there and checking for any bits and pieces loose in there there's nothing it looks lovely and smooth and the important thing is, is that we are going to let that dry, okay, so that we can actually 
see what it looks like when it's dry. Right, so we need to store all the beautiful paint that we made and I'm going to put my paint into the shells that I selected earlier and you just scoop some up with your palette knife and just go nice and slow and then we're just going to drop it in and mix it into that shell there so that it's sitting in the bottom there. Um, don't overfill it too much otherwise if it sort of leans over a bit it might sort of seep over the edges and I will also uh, you know you can see I've got heaps left there so I've got to put some in this beautiful shell as well and same thing I just scoop it up with a palette knife and then I'm just going to slowly let it drop off the palette knife and I'm just dabbing it a bit as well just to sort of make sure that it's going right into the bottom of the shell and I'm not going to fill it up too much and there you have it gold shimmer watercolor paint let's have a look at that dry swatch now you can see how smooth it is there's no particles loose and it is beautiful and shiny so what a fabulous gold paint Looking for some fabulous inspiration, I found on page 94 some very beautiful flowers and they inspired me. So the ones at the bottom there, they look fabulous. So I'm going to use those as my inspiration for some painting that we are about to do together. So we've made our beautiful paint, let's get painting. So I've got a size 4 and 2 paintbrush, some rough watercolour paper, a size 3 uh, archival pen or waterproof pen. I have a green paint and a couple of variations of purple and the shimmer gold that I made there. And of course water and a towelette. Those are very handy, or a paper towel you could use as well. Make sure that you pre-wet your paints to activate them to get the best out of your paints in terms of tinting strength. Right, I'm taking one of my darker purples and I am going to paint a beautiful flower that I was inspired uh, by um, Peggy Dean's book uh, that I showed earlier. And I am going to first do the flower part at the top and I'm just loosely painting that shape might um, just dilute the paint and just add a couple of drops of water in there it helps the uh, colors separate a little bit and then I'm just grabbing the lighter purple that I selected and I'm going to do the similar shape next door to it there we go and just diluting it again a little bit of water just to take down the tinting strength a bit and just nice and loose a couple of bits of water on there as well just to separate the colors a bit and I am going to take my green paint next to do the stems or stalks of the flowers will be the easiest part with a light pressure with the brush and just going up or you can go down if you wish there we are so those are the beautiful flowers there and we'll let those dry Next up, we are going to do some random splodges, uh, oval shaped egg uh, in the three different colors that I have here. So I've just limited my palette and I'm just applying a little bit of um, water on top of there to dilute the little blob. And then I will be doing one more blob after this. Don't have to be perfect in shape. Just an oval egg shaped 
splotch of colour. And then I'm just applying a little bit of water uh, from the brush onto the splotch to dilute it a little bit. So that when it dries, it will dry with a bit of texture. And I'm just, I took a little bit too much green, so I'm just dilute, I just diluted that a little bit. There we are. Right. A little bit of water there as well. Next up, I am just going to do some beautiful little leaves and I am just applying the paint onto the paper and uh, putting my brush down quite gently when I'm doing it. So you pop your brush down and then lift at the end. Uh, and so this is a great activity for practicing your brush strokes. I am still learning. Uh, my leaves are a bit wonky and that is okay. And I am just doing some little ones there. There we go. There we go. So I'm just applying that pressure down and then and then lifting it back up again at the end of the leaf. We have, um, I've just drawn out the shape of a butterfly. It is not perfect or symmetrical at all. I'm just applying a darker colour to the middle of the body of the butterfly. And then for the leaves, I am using a lighter purple. If you wish, you could use two different pinks, two different reds, two different blues, whatever you wish. And I'm just doing the outlines of the wings of the butterfly. And then I will fill those in. So it's not perfect at all, but um, it's fun and relaxing. So I'm just filling in those wings. And mostly using a wet on dry and then just grabbing some extra water on my brush to dilute the tint of the uh, strength of the paint. And then just diluting it a little bit more. There we go. So that's the lovely purple butterfly. And just dropping some bits of water on to dilute it a little bit. Over here I just um, apl applying some water onto the paper with my brush. And then I'm going to load up my brush with the purple and apply it. So I'm using a wet on wet technique, wet paint on wet paper. Which um, doesn't give you as much control over what the paint does but can be quite fun to see what the paint does when it dries. I'm only, uh, I'm only painting half of this box that you see and then afterwards I'll just erase the line at the bottom, the half of the square. And what about a beautiful gemstone? I drew the shape first as a guide as opposed to doing it um, randomly. <laughs> Uh, this will help guide me and then what I'm doing is applying uh, some of the uh, purple colour and diluting it a little bit and then just adding in a, a bit of the darker purple that I have here and mixing them in so they can play together a bit and when I am going to go around the uh, outline and fill in the other parts of the gemstone I'm actually going to leave a gap between each part of the gemstone so you can see that I've got a gap there in the middle and that just adds a bit of shape there so I'm just leaving a gap in between And just filling in those 
areas that I drew with the pencil and I am basically just randomly grabbing a bit of the lighter purple and darker purple as I go you could use any kind of color for your gemstone uh, because gemstones generally they come in all sorts of fabulous colors so have fun with it just choose a diff couple of different colors and mix them up a bit and then uh, I'm also going in around the edges and just adding in a bit of the darker purple to give it a bit more depth. So that's just another quick little uh, activity that you can do. Let's get started with our shimmer paint that we made. And it's important that you pre-wet your shimmer paint and let the water soak for at least one to two minutes. And the reason why is if it has set like mine has overnight, then we want to reactivate it with the water. The water will bring it to life, but it will need time okay to do its job to properly activate the paint and then instead of leaving the water sitting on the top we want to take our paintbrush and we want to move it around a bit so that we can encourage the paint to mix with the water to a lovely consistency okay and then we can see that the water and the paint are able to work together in harmony so that you get the best out of your paint that you made yourself now, if you're joining in on this tutorial and you haven't made the paint yourself, you can use any shimmer, a watercolor paint. And the importance is that you have allowed at that time to sit and pre-wet or activate with that water and then mix it around. Sometimes when you don't give it ample time what will happen is that the paint to water ratio is quite watery so you don't get a very strong tint of gold so that's what we want we want to get the best out of our paint okay so that is key so let's add some details some fun details to some of our doodles here because when you're working with a shimmer paint it can be a little daunting to not know what to do with it so I thought that I would share a few ideas to get you started and there are loads more ideas that I do share on my Instagram as to how I incorporate a matte watercolor paint with the shimmer and sometimes just shimmer on its own because working with shimmer watercolor paint is fabulous fun and I want you to be able to enjoy it instead of having it sit, sitting there looking beautiful and pretty you want to have fun with it so let's get started I have some there is some gold paint on my paintbrush uh, if I am worried I've got too much I can just on the side dab it down you can do the same on the side of your paint pan or whichever container you've used. And then I think that it's important not to overthink how to apply the gold. Uh, so what you can do is just apply a little bit to the bottom of your plant. And I would rinse it out a little bit with your water nearby and then see if you can just 
Blend that in a little bit in the bottom there. And the idea is that we're using the shimmer to add a little sparkle to our beautiful plant here. And any way you like. So what I've done is I've just done the bottom of the plant. If you want, you can do uh, the tips as well. You can even do the stalk. And sometimes I just do a couple of splashes on the stalk. With this other one here, uh, let's do something a little different and add a little bit of random bits here. And the reason why is afterwards we can go back to it. I'll just put some on the top there. They don't have to necessarily be on the flower if you don't want. And maybe a little bit down there, like that. There we go. And I'll just use a little bit of water to rinse it off and then sort of loosen it up here a little bit. I want you to have fun and experiment a little bit. Um, by adding some water here, I'm diluting it so it's not as strong. And then when it dries, it'll look pretty fabulous. Okay, so those are the flowers that we've just done. While the flowers are, the flowers are drying at the moment, we're going to take our paintbrush and do something fun with these unusual looking egg shapes. And grab our shimmer paint and then what we're going to do is we're going to do three lines of even width doesn't have to be perfect doesn't matter if it's not straight and we're going to do the same over here And the last one down the bottom. Okay, and then on the top, we're going to do two little wings. You might already know what we're doing already now. And a couple of wings here. And the last one. There we go. There's our wings. And then we'll pop in a couple of little eyes and a smiley face. There we go. I'll do one here. And a smiley face. And the last one. There you go. And how about a little at the end there. There we are. Right. Okay, we're going to let our little buzzy bees dry and we're going to move down to our gemstone here. Now what we want to do is get a little bit of gold on there. Okay, and just add a little bit more water if, if it's getting a bit um, thick. A little bit of water will dilute it a bit and give you a bit more movement with the paint. And just be careful of your work that's drying. And then we're going to add a little bit of detail to our beautiful gemstone. And ideally what we want to do is go to the corners and just dab a little bit in the corners. And because I've got quite a lot of paint on my brush, I'm only putting a little bit and then I'm going to dilute it in a moment. Okay. So 
Right, and then I'm going to rinse off my brush, make sure that you get rid of the uh, excess water, and then we're going to draw that out a bit. If uh, the paint that you've applied is still quite strong, just give your brush another rinse in the water. And we're just using that paint that we dabbed in there and we are spreading it out a bit and we are having fun with it most importantly especially if you've made the gold yourself and you can see that bit there's quite rich so I might just dilute that again which is fine there we are it's okay to spread it around a bit. If you're worried it's too much, you can take a paper towel uh, and just pick up some of the excess or spread it around like I'm doing, like this, which is fine. This is why it's really good that you've let the uh, matte watercolour dry underneath. And so basically what I'm doing is just mixing it around. It's going to look really neat when it's dried okay let's have fun with the beautiful butterfly here so we're going to use our shimmer gold to add a bit more structure and pattern to our butterfly and we must not forget to put a couple of these on here we are And then I'm just going to use that gold paint to add some detail to the wings. And when I do this, I just have a bit of fun with it. When I'm adding the patterns, I really, I just, I just go for it. Uh, I don't worry too much generally about matching. Uh, both sides as you can see it's it's absolutely not symmetrical <laughs> and uh, that's quite all right it's it's a great way to um, learn brush control by just doing little doodles like this that you can practice and have fun. There we go. So that's basically what I'm doing is if you want to um, initially you can go around your whole butterfly around the outline and the great thing is is that you're adding a bit of sparkle to your butterfly but you're also adding form and structure and I'm very lightly painting around the outline like that. There we are. And it's just a very quick little exercise. I think what takes the longest is, is actually waiting for that, that layer underneath to dry before you can work with your shimmer. If you choose to work with your shimmer paint and it's not dry, that, that's actually okay because you're going to see some lovely uh, dancing on your paper with the water and the, the colour anyway. But this way you have more control when you're doing a, a wet on dry technique as opposed to a wet paint on wet paper. It gives you a little less control. But sometimes some really cool things can happen on wet on wet. So it's a great technique to have a go at. Because 
completely random but fun and I'll leave it there so I'm just adding a little bit more water and this is just a fun little abstract activity you could draw some patterns over this if you wanted to And what I'm doing is just being completely random. What am I drawing? I don't know. It's just a pattern. And then what I can do is do the outline like that. And that will just add a bit more form and structure to it. And this is also a really great activity for practicing your brush control. It's a quick little activity. Like I said, what takes the longest is waiting for the, the layer underneath to dry before you can work with your shimmer watercolour. And it's just a great way to practice that brush control. There you are. So just a fun little abstract activity there with a contrast of the shimmer and the matte and a bit of white underneath there. And then of course a border to give it a bit more form and structure. And of course it it will all depend on what colours you've actually chosen to work with initially uh, as to what it will look like in front of you right now. One last doodle that's quite um, relaxing and quick is leaves. And when you're working with uh, leaves, it's a, it's a great way to practice control and uh, how to apply your brush um, and lift it and and so I quite enjoy doing uh, leaves as well as um, applying some of the shimmer to the ends um, you could do a pattern if you wanted to instead like that or dots and you can apply shimmer randomly to the stalk if you wish. And also you can wet your brush to dilute it and then just drag the paint in here. And what happens is you, once it dries it will have a shine on top of the, the matte colour there. It will look really fabulous. So just drag out that color a little bit there so just on that leaf alone you've got just a few different ideas that you can use and it's a bit hard to see because it's wet so once it dries i'll be able to share that with you and also um, as well we're making sure that it's dry if we are going to work with a pen to add detail so let that dry and then we will come back to it to add a little bit of detail with our waterproof pen. Now that your shimmer watercolour layer has dried, we can now get a waterproof uh, archival ink or permanent ink pen and use that to add a bit of detail and Let's start with our beautiful flowers over here. I'll zoom in. That way you can see what I am doing. And no rhyme or reason how I do this, just random. Let's see. Make sure that you can get in there and see the detail. And then... Um, I'm sort of going around the shape roughly of the plant 
and uh, the thickness of the pen I hadn't mentioned was a 3. You could use a bit thinner perhaps if you like, like a 0, 2, 0, 1 or 0 0.005 or you could go for a bit thicker or do a mix of each. So as you can see, pretty random how I've done that. And then with this one's a little bit smaller, but I'm just going to add a little bit there and maybe a little bit of coming out the bottom of that one there too. And just sort of brings a little bit of deep, uh, sort of it highlights the gold, but it also gives a bit more texture there, breaks it up a bit. And then I'm just going around very roughly as you can see that the gold has dried it looks fantastic so that's the uh, the flowers there that I've added um, with the waterproof pen and it just gives it a little bit more uh, detail shape form let's move on to our cute little bumblebees okay Usually what I do is I might just add a little bit of um, shape to the the wings and I won't go around uniformly and I might just, don't forget the little legs, go there and if you want you can put little dots and little legs there and it's such a quick little activity and it's quite fun there we go it's a little bumblebees and what we can do is we can move over here to our gorgeous little gemstone you can see what's happened when it's dried and been blended in when we use the water to sort of wash it out a bit and then by using our pen we can just add a bit of structure to the gemstone and just very roughly uh, I'm going around the edges and I'm not pressing down too hard either with the pen and you can see that just gives it a little bit more structure and and it also just gives it a little bit more detail and texture there as well I'm not going to do anything with the butterfly I think it looks quite fun like it is as well as the um, gorgeous wavy type gold seaweed thing going on over there with the leaves, if you want, you can go in and you can, um, say with the one that I've blended out here, is just go around it loosely, if you like, and then just add some random bits in there. And then I'll just go a little bit closer so you can see that. And then here as well. So it's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty random how I'm doing this. And then I'm just going around there like that there we go so that gold's come up really nicely so that is our fabulous looking doodle art uh, I just really wanted to give you not only the how to make the watercolor paint but how can we use that in our work in our art uh, because this is something that is fun relaxing and a quick and easy uh, activity that you can do and and there's so many other fabulous ideas that you can stretch into outside of this not just what I've shown you here you could have so much fun with adding a bit of detail to your landscapes, rainbows, adding some shimmer into rainbows. You can detail rocks, 
if you like and not just butterflies but you can do other sorts of bugs and snails and you can also stretch out and use your shivers in, in mandala or pattern art as well so there's lots of different things that you can use your shimmer watercolor paints in uh, initially when i uh, first started using shimmer watercolor paints i i didn't really know what to do with them um i i, I saw a lot of people using them for for lettering pieces uh, and i thought well you, there, there must be something else that i can do with my shimmer paint because i'm not really uh, a letterer so um, I quite like to doodle and do abstracts and uh, so that's how I like to incorporate the shimmer into that so hopefully I've given you some ideas so that you can not only make your own paint but use it in your art as well for decorating uh, you know cards and things like that which would be quite fun thank you so much for joining me today on how to make a gold shimmery paint and how to use that paint in your art i hope you had fun and i really would love to see what your paint looks like and what beautiful art you have made with your own handmade paint even if you didn't make a paint, I would still love to see what doodles you decorated with your shimmer of your choice. So please make sure you tag me and the Pigeon Letters as well.